Hey guys, what's up? By Zach the Tron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video. And in this one, I am talking about Town Hall 10 base building, how to build a good anti three star base at Town Hall 10, one that can defend 10v10 attacks as well as 11v10 dip attacks, because we see both of those uh, bombarding Town Hall 10 bases these days. So this video is going to give you um, some specific things you want to do to defend each strategy. We're going to start off by drawing some of this stuff out using this base as an example. We'll take a look at one more base as well and we'll show some replays on them so we can see uh, an actual real-time attacks how this stuff plays out. But let's start by just kind of going through the basics of a Town Hall 10 base using this one uh, as an example. Um, so starting off the basic things that you know you probably should already kind of have a grasp for if you're starting to build anti three star bases are just the basic things like um, it's the little things but having the expo so it's four tiles from the wall so the queen can't reach it on a queen walk same with the air defense that way the queen can't snipe some of these makes it difficult to queen walk that side because um, the healers will get shot down because she can't reach the air defense. Um, same over here, you have this archer tower that can't be reached by the queen either. So stuff like that where you have these defenses that are guarding queen walks, they're just guarding the queen in general because they can target her um, as she approaches the wall, but she can't reach them without entering the base. Of course, same with the inferno towers, um, got to keep them away from being too close to the wall. But just basic stuff like that, um, that you already should have an idea of. We have the basic core of the base that has the queen. Oftentimes the queen's going to be put in the core of the base. Then keep her, um, uh, keep the important stuff like the inferno towers, the air defenses, the queen, um, kind of spread out around the base. Don't give a kill squad too much value. Basic stuff like that. I'm not going to cover it too much. Um, I'm going to try to be as specific as possible. So don't take everything I say as if you have to do it. I'm just going to give you guys some very clear, specific things to do. And once you experiment with that, if you have a better um, idea or something starts working better, you can uh, use that and kind of just go from there. But this will give you a very good baseline of what to do. So in order to identify what you want to have in a base, we have to look at what we're defending against. And it's going to be basically miners, hogs, laloon, uh, dragloon, and basically mass witches, uh, the witch bowler attack. Those are all used by both Town Hall 10s and Town Hall 11s. So there's not really any attack strategy that's exclusive to Town Hall 10s or Town Hall 11s. They both use them to attack Town Hall 10s. So let's just go through them and talk about how this base is set up, and it should start to make sense in a little bit. Um, so basically, for miners, that's one of your biggest priorities, especially if you're a lower level Town Hall 10, you should really be uh, thinking about miners. Um, because a lot of clans are going to use them. Even clans that aren't that good of attackers can use miners because there's a lot more room for error uh, because they're kind of a spam troop to some extent. So um, I really like the Inferno Towers not being in the same uh, like line of attack, so not being one on one side, one on the other, but instead putting them both kind of on one side of the base makes it difficult to kind of just go through in a traditional miner attack straight through the base from one inferno to the other and heal between them makes it more difficult by having them offset like this. So they are closer together. A kill squad has a better chance of getting both of them, but we have some storages in between to kind of act as a buffer. Um, and we also have a, a gap here so the queen can't snipe both infernos. And this compartment right here is very small. So really kind of cutting off, making a bit of a bottleneck here, making it difficult to get both infernos with the kill squad, but still keeping them close together because this will defend miners much better when your inferno towers are more... Um, or closer to each other. That way, um, they're kind of offset on the base. So it makes it very awkward to try to attack this with one wave of miners because one side, um, no matter where they come from, they can't deal with the infernos one at a time. Uh, they basically kind of have to encounter them almost simultaneously. And then one's going to be kind of awkwardly offset to the side. So that's one good thing to use there. Um, also, we have the giant bombs just kind of spread throughout the base. 
You notice the bomb towers inside the base, so a queen walking around the outside won't get any free bomb towers. That's important because they're basically a giant bomb, plus they're a defense, so they're very important buildings, and you want to keep them uh, away from where the queen can snipe them because oftentimes people use the queen on one side, the king on the other to funnel their miners. So keeping them away from where uh, the queen can reach. In, uh, and there's a nice big core of the base that has wizard tower, giant bomb, giant bomb, bomb tower, the queen. Um, that, those are some of your best defenses. Basically anything with the splash, so wizard towers, giant bombs, inferno towers, of course, and bomb towers, but also the skelly traps are very, very effective. I recommend putting all your skellies on ground and keeping them either in the core of the base like this or kind of by the infernos or both, kind of how these skellies are set up. So just kind of keep them in those areas. Um, don't put them all in one spot. Put them um, close to each other, but not too close. So there's a little bit of a gap between each one. The miners have to deal with each one separately. And put the queen, um, for other reasons we'll talk about later, you don't want her too close to the infernos, but keep her in a, in a place where she can aggro these miners at important times. If they use miners coming this direction, which I think they did on one of their attacks, the queen will aggro the miners, pulling them away from this inferno tower right here. So keep the queen close enough that she's relevant. Um, she's in this big kill zone for the miners. This is kind of the kill zone. We have four giant bombs right here. The fifth one has come towards the outside, but we have four giant bombs. We have two wizard towers, uh, two bomb towers kind of in the local area. Just keep that splash. Um, not all in one spot, but kind of keep it towards the core, then have towards the outside this point defense that's going to be raining in on the miners. Um, that makes it very difficult as they get towards the back end. Um, they, of course, they can, they can attack from the other direction as well, um, but typically they're going to try to come at one of your infernos first. So it's either going to be right here or right here, and then either way there's kind of a ring of point defense around here away from the infernos that will start to target them as they have to deal with this splash that's in the core. So that's very good for defending miners. Also some HP by the infernos makes it a good um, way to defend miners because they get caught up on the storages. Also the CC of course provides some HP. And then as they get towards the back end, there's a few more storages mixed in, in among the defenses. That's important. Don't put them way out like where this gold mine is out here. Put them mixed in with the defenses so the miners have to deal with them in between uh, defenses there. Now, for defending hogs, it's a little bit more complicated, but if you go with the offset inferno towers, which we'll assume uh, we do, basically a hog attacker is going to have to get at least one of those infernos. Otherwise, it makes it very difficult to hit a base with hogs. So if you assume they have to get the queen, which has to go down on a hog attack, and typically one of the infernos, you can assume they're going to be coming somewhere from this side of the base, which is why you want to put those springs on the opposite side. This base could have done a little bit of a better job. Um, it, it has these nice springs here, here, and I think one down here, but it could have put some more in this little ring around the opposite end of the base. I don't think they were as necessary to put them right here or anything like that. Um, also, by the infernos, I'm not a huge fan of because oftentimes a kill squad will get that uh, Inferno Tower taken out, which will negate the Spring Trap. I think those are there for miners as well, but um, I'd rather have four to five of the Spring Traps on the back side. Um, but also, if we assume that the Kill Squad is going to come from this side of the base here, the King, you it's often a good idea to keep the King away from the Kill Squad because he does some serious work on Hogs. Also, some Teslas, uh, heavy point defense with Spring Traps, not necessarily giant bombs. Giant bombs are not that effective at killing hogs. They're better off used to kill the kill squad in a way. So putting them by the infernos is oftentimes your best bet to try to weaken a kill squad like Valks or something that can come racing in here. If they wall break here, then jump over the archer tower. Putting those giant bombs by the infernos and by the kill squad area um, will oftentimes be your best bet because the heal spells are gonna be there for the hogs. You wanna kill them with spring traps, with the king, and with some skellies even. Uh, this base used the skellies more towards this area for miners, but if you throw one uh, skelly back here, it'll get on those hogs and do some damage. Um, even if they have a poison spell, the king can still fight through that. So the king's a very important tool for defending hogs, but we have um, a bomb tower 
we have these giant bombs and we have a core that's active. That's important. You want to have a core that has defenses in it because otherwise um, you're giving them too easy of a hog lane around the base. You want to have a kill squad that has these air sweepers, an expo, um, wizard tower, just even a Tesla. Defenses like that that make it difficult to heal the hogs because they get too spread out. Some of them come to the core and cut across the base. Others go around, around the long way. Sorry. Um, and defenses on the outside to kind of screw up that pathing, make them come out before they come back in. That's all good stuff. Now, of course, they can come from the opposite side of the base, but it makes it much more difficult because if you have these infernos with giant bombs next to them, you're forcing at least one freeze on each inferno typically, which is going to make it difficult to, uh, to do there. So just don't oversell. Don't put all your hog defending stuff on the back end. But if, as long as your base is somewhat even, you can assume they're going to try to get one of those infernos at least with a, a kill squad, which opens you up to defend hogs on the back end uh, very nicely. Okay, so I'm not going to try to make this video too long. I'm kind of going on for a while here, but let's move on to talking about La Lune here. And the keys for defending La Lune are having the wizard towers. Keep those guys out of range of the air defenses for the most part. You can see that's done with these uh, three wizard towers, not the fourth one, but that's okay. Um, so keep those to the point where they can target loons. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? The sweepers, you kind of have to s ask yourself, where's the kill squad gonna be used? Typically the kill squad is going to, uh, looks like I have my notifications on, is going to try to come in, maybe get the queen, maybe get some air defenses, maybe get the Inferno. There's not any must-haves, especially if you have a Lava Hound CC. They can kind of be more picky and, ch and choose what they want to get. But the important things are you keep these red air bombs. Um, often by the Infernos is your best bet. If As long as the air defenses are far enough away from the Infernos, keep the red bombs there or put them next to a wizard tower. But I like to put them by the Infernos actually because that way um, when they come at the Inferno, uh, they're not going to be able to heal the loons over those red bombs, so it makes it much more effective at killing uh, those loons as they come in there. Uh, the Seeking Air Mines typically just put them next to the air defenses, although sometimes you keep one or two in the core to defend against a drag loon. Depends on how your base is set up. And um, that's pretty much it. Just make the La Loon pathing difficult if you can, and by that I mean make it difficult to path into these Infernos. They should have to get through, you know, one, two, three, four, five defenses before they get to these infernos. And a good way to do that is to have these defenses that kind of lead them around in a circle here. Don't let there be direct uh, loon pathing to these infernos because the infernos are so important on La Luna attacks. And um, a bomb tower next to the queen is always nice to defend against skellies. There kind of is one on this base, but even closer to the queen is often better because that way the skelly trap can't kill the queen if the bomb tower is right there. So that's another good thing to use. Um, La Lune, not quite as common, so you probably won't have to worry about it as much. Let's see, uh, dragons, just basically keep some of these air defenses protected to the point where the queen can't take them out. And um, keep some HP in your base, keep these sweepers central, pointing in opposite directions. Uh, I'd like to keep one or two seeking air mines towards the middle of the base to take out dragons. And um, really, unless the base is asking for dragons, it's gonna be difficult, especially for a Town Hall 10, to use them. So this one air defense is a little bit vulnerable, um, but there's really only one that can be easily taken out. This one can be sniped by the queen, um, but it's an awkward place because it's right in the middle of the base. And typically what people like to do is come in at the corners, just like a minor attack, and use one hero on each corner, then send the uh, dragon straight down the middle. But as long as you have some HP in your base, some high hit point buildings, as long as you have um, some of your air defenses protected, the sweepers um, kind of pointed in opposite directions, it's pretty difficult to do. Just keep those archer towers somewhat spread out, as long with, along with the expos, and you should be fine. Uh, the hit point buildings next to the Inferno Towers is typically pretty effective, so you um, shouldn't have to worry as much about that. As far as witches go and defending that kind of uh, stuff, unless your base is just asking for it, unless it's very traditionally set up, where there's small compartments that they can jump through, like two jumps for each Inferno Tower through the core to get from one side to the other, and it's a very contained attack, they're going to have a lot of trouble using witches, so 
even if you just do the inferno tower spread like I do, keeping them close together on one side of the base, then you can already defend against witches very effectively. So not a whole lot to worry about there. Just don't make your base too uh, standard and traditional. But um, that's pretty much it, guys. Those are some of the details you want to do. So keeping all that in mind, let's take a look at a few attacks on some different bases here. We'll take a look at two attacks on this base, then one attack on a different base that was very good, um, both of them from the last war. So let's go ahead and cut to that. Okay, so here are the two attacks we're going to be showing on this base. Both Town Hall 10 attacks. Uh, this base doesn't have any dip fails to show, so I'm not going to show uh, any dips on it, but... It's difficult to defend dips, but the stuff you use to defend against 10v10 attacks is pretty much the same as dips. So focus on defending 10v10s and dips will typically follow. And by dips, I mean 11v10, a Town Hall 11 coming down to attack you. But if you focus on 10v10, uh, the same stuff is going to be useful def for defending dip attacks because, like I said, it's uh, the same attack strategies typically. So uh, this one is trying to use hogs. Like I said, they're coming for those Inferno Towers. They want to get one or both of them taken out. It's going to be a Suicide Queen here, uh, mainly because there's Lava Hound CC. For CCs, I do recommend using a Lava Hound. There are other reasons to use small troops sometimes or a Golem, but I typically recommend a Lava Hound. You don't need the Golem if your base is good at defending miners otherwise, because typically the Golem is used to defend miners, but oftentimes it's not needed. So uh, Hound is typically your best bet. The Queen actually pops the Hound, and look, he gets both Inferno Towers taken out. So that's often going to happen with a good kill squad push that had some Valks, had some Bowlers. Um, big investment used a jump and a rage so because there's no infernos doesn't have a freeze has i think 26 hogs and three heals but that is a um a battle that can be won because take a look at this um the defenses in the core make it difficult to heal all the hogs at once so it kind of spreads out the hogs a little bit, makes the pathing tough. Look at some of them cut across the base. I also said that's very uh, difficult for an attacker because they cut across the base. There's some core giant bombs doing some work. That last heal was definitely off. But even if the heal uh, was saved for that bigger group of hogs that was still alive, there's just too many defenses plus the king. The king is so important to have defending hogs. Um, can't be stressed enough. If you have a base that is... Uh, especially susceptible to hogs, having the king there on the back end away from those infernos, not guarding the queen, just keeping him away from the infernos, away from the kill squad, and letting him do work on the hogs is your best way to defend against them. This one's going to be some miners we're going to take a look at here. Um, actually uses a quake, which was kind of interesting. Uh, it's basically the typical miner attack with the king on one side, the queen on the other, then miners just straight up the gut of the base. Um... And once again, we'll see how this base defends. But just getting back to hogs for one second, the kill squad, it got both infernos, but that's a trade you can do if you have enough springs on the back end of the base, um, plus the king, plus maybe one scaly trap, and then um, your core, if there's still some defenses in your core left up, that makes the hog pathing more difficult. Even with both infernos going down, you can see it's still doable to defend if you have the right stuff on the back end of your base. So here come the miners through the base here, uh, just kind of healing them up. But look right here, the uh, skelly traps are popping, the heroes are engaging the miners, they're engaged on wizard towers, there's bomb towers, and you have the defenses, like I said, those point defense are shooting in. So even though it's a very well deployed attack, both heroes are still alive and moving through. Uh, the miners just don't, aren't getting the job done. Like I said, the heroes, the skellies, distracted them, pulled them away from that one inferno tower. He missed the queen's ability, but that really wouldn't have mattered, even with the queen up a little bit longer. Still would have been a fail. Uh, but having those infernos each on the same side of the base makes it difficult to get both of them, because you can't come at both of them directly, but if you come directly at one, the other one's offset to the side. And if your heroes, if the skellies pull everything into the core of the base, that Inferno Tower pathing is very questionable. So this last base right here was probably one of their best bases. It, it took a lot of attacks and we still did not three star it in the end. I think it ate up like four or five of our 10v10 attacks. So this base defended very well. I'm not going to go in depth showing the traps or anything. I'm just going to kind of show you guys quickly 
um, the one attack that I think is a very good example of how this base is very well designed. And once again, notice how it has the Inferno Towers. Um, it has them kind of on opposite sides of the base. So a little bit of a different design, but I wanted to show a slightly different one, um, different than the one I showed you guys at first. But it has on the bottom left there, Spring Traps, the King, it has very good anti-hog defenses because as you can see, the attacker is forced to use a kill squad towards the top to come at the Inferno Tower to get the Queen. The Queen and the Infernos are otherwise too far away to use a kill squad from the bottom left. But take a look, the, um, the base is very wide, making it difficult to heal all the hogs at once. So the heal spells get a little bit awkward, the hog pathing gets awkward. He has at least one scaly, if not two down there, plus the king, plus the spring traps. So for defending hogs, which are one of the more popular Town Hall 10 attack strategies, at least in CWL type wars, it's good to keep those infernos um, and the queen away from kind of a hog kill zone, which doesn't include giant bombs as much as it includes spring tra traps, the king, and some difficult hog pathing that makes it difficult to heal all the hogs at once. If you keep some Teslas on the outside, it can draw those hogs out and uh, making it so a heal can't cover the entire group as it moves th through the base. So basically to recap, um, mainly defending against the miners by having those Inferno Towers a little bit um, offset and uh, towards one side, and then having your hog kill zone towards the other. For defending La Luna, it's the basic stuff, having your wizard towers in good spots, their air traps in good spots, um, stuff I've talked about in the past. Not as difficult to defend La Loon. Keep some air defenses in range of each other so they can both take out a Lava Hound once it's sitting on an air defense. That way they help kind of protect each other. Um, so keep them in groups, at least two or three of them. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Good luck with your Town Hall 10 base building. Um, can't give you all the answers. If you do want your own Town Hall 10 base that I create, you can sign up for my Patreon uh, page. And if you do, I think the third tier of donation, you get a monthly Town Hall uh, 9, 10, 11, whichever you are, you get a war base sent to you that you can use that is a certified anti-three-star base that I have built myself. So if you're interested, check that out on my Patreon page. But otherwise, good luck building your bases, and I hope this video helped. Thank you for watching. See you later. Bisectatron out.